So go look out of your window. That's right, a pig is flying. Because I only see CM Punk come back to the WWE, but a few days ago, there was a report by Fightful Select, or Fightful.com, whichever way you want to call it, Sean Ross Sapp, that WWE officials in their negotiations with Punk were all a bit like, oh, hi, maybe we could even come up with a match, Mr. Punk, where it's you versus Stone Cold Steve Austin. What? Now, if you are a long-term nerd like me, you will be able to go back to 2012 when the WWE 13 video game coming out, short little story time with Simon here. I was actually working for THQ at the time, and although I had nothing to do with that because it was an American project, CM Punk did come over to do the UK press because he was on the cover of the game, and I was his, I don't know, helper handler for the day, and I just spent 24 hours getting him a lot of diet Red Bull, I think it was diet Red Bull, some sort of diet energy drink, and look, in terms of my professional dealings with him, he couldn't have been nicer, he is a very sweet man. Anyway, the point is they did do this sit-down interview. I think he was asking me if you, if, if you would please allow me to retort. And as you have just seen my word it sent shockwaves around the wrestling industry because all of a sudden everybody was like oh my gosh if we did this program if we did this feud it would likely be absolutely faboo because it basically writes itself and that is what we're going to talk about today because let's face it if this is going to go down it will be at wrestlemania 40 ever since austin had that amazing wrestlemania comeback against kevin owens and the following night where he just stunned everybody people have been going oh my gosh it's going to happen again now it sounded like it could have been roman reigns versus steve austin at wrestlemania 39 we didn't do it but the point of WrestleMania 40 is the fact that WWE and most big sporting events, they love anniversaries, they love birthdays, they love the big zero when you do have two numbers. So we're getting into the number 40. I mean, we did something big at 10, we did something 20, we did something big at 30. How that was 10 years ago when The Undertaker's defeated streak was broken. That didn't make it. his defeated streak. Imagine that. You always lose, Undertaker. Get it together. Anyway, the point is this. Getting back on track. If you are going to do it, doing it at somewhere like WrestleMania 40 makes all the sense in the world. And it would be a proper dream match as we sort of move away from the attitude era, I suppose. We are getting less and less dream matches. I mean, wrestling is cyclical, so we'll get back to them. But in terms of things we've never seen, that is one of them. And I think, actually, it would be pretty amazing. And that's because it comes down to this. On the one side, you have Stone Cold Steve Austin, who is an everyman. And he drinks beer and he tells the boss to go and stuff himself, whatever you want to say. And on the other hand, and I do believe that we are going to do it by April 2024, we will start to see the semblance of this again. You have CM Punk, who is the straight edge warrior he doesn't drink and he doesn't do any of these bad things that steve austin indulges in in fact there was this very that very good interaction that punk and austin had a long old time ago when the rattlesnake was the gm of raw and punk was accusing him of being drunk on the job and he said can you do the alphabet backwards and steve austin said something like no but i can kick your ass backwards i was like man steve this is why you are the best so here's what i would do obviously i believe the first feud that we are going to get into uh, when it comes to cm punk is cm punk versus seth rollins and during all of that as we talked about on the other video i'm sure a card will have popped up there. You have to establish the fact that CM Punk is a hypocrite and it's going to be Seth Rollins that tells him that as he hinted on Raw. He's going to be like, oh, you say that you've come home and you say that you're happy to be here, but you left in 2014. All you did was run down the place. There was a lawsuit. It was just negative, negative, negative. Then you went to somebody else and you started a different company or you joined in with one of our major competitors all because you hated WWE so much. And now when you had nowhere else to go, you walk back in the door. So don't you come into my world into my life and telling me all these things it's absolute nonsense and you know it punk can then fight back too and i'm sure there's some stuff he can say about seth rollins as well i mean you could even take seth's current character now i quite like it but a lot of people don't and you can be like look at you coming out in your over the top suits and your stupid glasses don't pretend that's the real seth rollins even though that you say it is and in fact the only time we ever see glimpses of your authentic self is when you get mad and you get serious as you're doing right now and as he has been doing with Drew McIntyre. And I have this feeling that when Punk and Seth go at it, he may actually lose the championship to Drew. But that's another video for a different day. I can't put in all the chess pieces because that'd be redonkulous. Now, in terms of who wins and who loses, I guess kind of if you're going to do Punk versus Austin, I suppose Punk has to win. But that's kind of by the by. You just need to establish that CM Punk is not the fan favorite, right? He's not the hero. As soon as you do do that and you have planted those seeds, that is going to allow CM, as we'll call him. Can I call you CM? He's not over there, but let's pretend that he is. But then you can go back to, you know, when he was at his zenith in WWE. And he can be all like, I'm better than you. I'm straight edge. I don't drink. I'm not saying we do a repeat of what we did before, but you get that attitude, that holy than thou attitude, that better than you attitude. Now, look, a lot of fans are going to love that. That's how he was able to build up such a fan base to begin with. But when he is talking like that, and he is cutting those promos, maybe because he feels it deep down in his tum-tum, it does come across like legitimate. So all of a sudden, everyone is going to buy into that. And given how the WWE universe works, I would imagine it would kind of put him in shades of gray and maybe 
tweener territory, which is such a silly, silly term. But I do think we'll probably move him to being a heel as well, especially if we're looking at it from a backstage or behind the scenes point of view. They have running sheets, right? Where it says good guys and bad guys. I would imagine that ideally, if they could make it work, good guy's going to be Seth Rollins. The bad guy's going to be CM Punk, especially if he is going to go on to take on Austin. Austin's going to get cheered regardless, especially in what? Philadelphia? I think that's where it is. Either way, that's what's going to happen. So you get through that and either Punk wins because he's being an asshole, maybe he even cheats or does something like that, or he loses because he's being an asshole. But I think it kind of works either way because he can come out the next night on Raw or wherever you want to pull the trigger and he can be like, you know, the only reason I did lose is because I got the, the wool pulled over my eyes. This Seth Rollins, he's, he's untrustworthy. You know, he's a bad person, et cetera, et cetera. Or if he does win, obviously, then he can be like, right, I told you what I've been saying to you for the last few weeks. Everybody else around here is scared of me. Everywhere else around here is intimidated by me. And it's because I speak the truth and it's because I have a certain edge, not Adam Copeland, to my persona and the controversy that comes with me everywhere is what's going to steer me to championships, success, and making a bunch of money. And the reason I think it's really important, again, if he is going to play the villain, why the finances is important, because then that's more hypocritical rhetoric, right? Oh, I came home and I love here, wrestling's so great. Give me a massive bag. So as soon as the glass does break, and I think you can't do what you did with Kevin Owens before, when Owens essentially carried that entire program with Steve Austin, which was totally fine, I loved it, until he did make his return at WrestleMania 39. I think this time to ensure that it does feel different, which is always important, when you're talking about legends and people coming back, you are going to have to have a couple of promo offs. I mean, one Raw would be for more than fine, but if you could do two or three, I think you're going to get more out of this. And I would do that thing that wrestling loves to do these days where you basically insinuate and you tell everyone, listen, Stone Cold Steve Austin is going to turn up, but you never say his name, so you get the big return pop. And this is what Steve Austin can literally lay his hat on while also kind of understanding where Punk is coming from. Now, I don't know if they want to go too much into this. I would, because I think you're only going to get one shot of it. But Steve Austin can be like, look, back in 2002, I walked out of the company right? I understand what it's like to be creatively unfulfilled. I feel like everybody is against you. But do you know what happened? I went away. I shut my mouth. And within 12 months, even after the company ran me down, I returned. I had to pay a big fine. And I held my hands up. And I apologized. Do you know what you have never done, punk? You have never said sorry. Not once. And in fact, when you were cutting your big return promo, and you're acting like the WWE is your home and the greatest thing ever... You didn't apologize then. In fact, you've still got that chip on your shoulder and you think you're so hard done by even though you've gone out and done all these amazing things. Once again, look, they're not going to be able to help themselves no matter what they say. Remember, he won't say AEW. Remember when you went to AEW? They gave you the world. And what did you do? You slapped him right in the face. Punk can then get super duper man and be like, man, whatever, Stone Cold Steve Austin. Like, you know, but you built your entire career of basically being a drunkard and being an addict and doing all of these things. In fact, it's probably tied into his injuries, I suppose. Like, if you lived a better lifestyle, maybe you would have been able to recover from those terrible things and you wouldn't have to retire all the way back at WrestleMania 19. Because I do think you have to hammer home on that. There is no way after everything these two guys have done, you cannot play off the fact that one is a beer swilling redneck and the other one is meant to be all, you know, now again, straight edge, I don't do this, I don't do that. That's why all their interactions before this were so fascinating because they were so damn good on the microphone. And there's obvious similarities there, but when it comes to their overriding personalities, that's where the big 180 is. So that's where they have to fall out. Now look, once you've established that, you can just get away from it. But the moment CM Punk says to him to prove that my lifestyle and the way that I have lived my life, not apologizing, not saying sorry, doing whatever I want, is better than yours, meeting the ring at WrestleMania 40 and kablamo kaboom, we going to get on with it. Now, this is why the Seth Rollins thing is interesting, because I do not believe that Stone Cold Steve Austin would come back to lose to CM Punk. I don't mean that in a bad way, but if he's not going to lose to Kevin Owens, I don't see why he would lose to CM Punk. Now, it's a little bit different because CM Punk is lightning in a bottle, but that is far more confusing to me about what you do. But I would imagine that CM Punk would lose, which means he probably does need to beat Seth Rollins, right? Which opens a massive can of worms. If you're Seth right now, you must be like, man, I'm the company guy. I'm always defending this place and people keep coming back for by the promotions and whipping my ass. But it also does all tie in to what comes next. And, you know, I do think this ties into an Austin versus CM Punk program. There is a small chance, I would say, I'm going to give it an 8.7% chance that actually maybe you have Seth win against CM Punk to set him up to become the, not the voice of the voiceless guy, but the 454 day guy. You know, when he did the Paul Heyman run, I think that was the, the peak of CM Punk as a heel in WWE. I thought it was fantastic. Everything he did with The Rock, so, so good. If Seth Rollins is able to beat him to unleash the beast or at least the inner demon within CM Punk, which then leads him onto this feud with Austin, where again, he feels hard done by and he feels stressed and he threatens to walk out, which when Austin comes back and he's just like, man, maybe he can run down Austin. Maybe he can even be like, you know, why don't you treat me like a stone cold Steve Austin? I 
should be at the same level of a Stone Cold Steve Austin. Nobody puts me on their Mount Rushmore, which is when Austin comes back and goes through everything we've already talked about. With the twist being that somehow CM Punk wins at WrestleMania and you can do all the shenanigans in the world. It doesn't matter. We've gone full bad guy with Punk here. And it's not going to be the main event. Well, I believe the main event of night one. But again, because there's a night two and because this ties in, I believe that CM Punk will beat Roman Reigns. You're still ending WrestleMania on a happy note. If you can come up with an idea that Steve Austin's happy with, I'd imagine that he would do it. But this is the thing. Coming out the other side, if CM Punk defeats Stone Cold Steve Austin. He has to go into another feud that is absolutely massive. And as we've also seen, I'll do another video on this too, Roman Reigns has already been touted as a future opponent for CM Punk. And that one is so obvious, it writes itself. So if Roman Reigns has lost the championship to Cody Rhodes, which he should do, Cody should be the champion come April 2024. He's down on his luck. He's probably lost Solo Sokoa at that point. I believe that will happen soon. Maybe even when he gets into his Randy Orton feud at the Royal Rumble. My prediction, not a guarantee. We don't know. His last friend, his last wise man is Paul Heyman, the guy that started him off on this tribal chief run to begin with, right? So what you do is all of a sudden you start doing the teasing again and CM Punk is now sniffing around Roman Reigns again, CM Punk hasn't been defined <laughs> to either brand. And essentially what we do, and again, I want to do a whole video, so I'm not going to give too much away. It is Paul Heyman that sends, ironically, Roman Reigns to his ultimate rock bottom when he you know, turns his back on him, he betrays him, he rejoins up with CM Punk. We go right back into that. And again, I know we're relying on nostalgia here, but it always works. And that will just get <laughs> the biggest reaction ever. And everyone will go crazy and I will go crazy too. And then what you've done is Roman Reigns has lost his bloodline. He's lost his championship. When we do that, of course, he's going to go babyface. But to ensure that he does have his good guy run, you need that one last bullet to where people go, well, you know, you have been a bit of a penis for the last 12 months, but now I feel sorry for you because you totally got screwed over and you get him screwed over by Paul Hamer, like I say, turning his back, joining CM Punk and then you go right into the CM Punk Roman Reigns feud. Now, I don't think Roman Reigns is going to want to lose to CM Punk given the history they do have. Again, you can Google it and look it up. If CM Punk has beat Stone Cold Steve Austin at WrestleMania 40, it doesn't even matter, right? It doesn't. They can ride that until the cows come home and you can come up with a bunch of stuff to do. So I really do hope this happens because I just want chaos all the time in professional wrestling. I don't mean this as morbid as it sounds. It's just the way that I like to kind of sum it up. I am going to be dead one day. So if WWE can pull all these things out of their tuchus, I hope that they do do it. And if I get CM Punk versus Seth Rollins, I get CM Punk versus Steve Austin, and I get CM Punk versus Roman Reigns. In his 12 months in the company, I'm going to be the happiest man ever. And I don't think he's somebody that needs to go after a world championship nowadays. I really, really don't. And even if you want to do that, it would be fine. I don't think there's a problem. I think as long as you do anything in the correct way, it will work. But you've also ticked another box during all of this, because I bet when Triple H and CM Punk were having discussions, not only apparently is Triple H put in a behavior clause to make sure nothing goes down, I'd imagine Punk would be like, look, I really would like to main event that WrestleMania that I never got to do and imagine even though it's night one and it's not the same you know take what you can get and it still counts as far as i'm concerned doing against stone cold steve austin doesn't even matter if you're match one that's the main event kevin owens has said that you ain't ever going to top it and really your career goes downhill from there to be honest you don't have to do any of that either even if cm punk and stone cold just pull a triple h and the undertaker where they just look at each other and point to the sign because you have to point to the sign in wwe i thought it'd be absolutely fantastic but Yes, I hope this does happen. I hope they do do it. I hope they, again, lean on the past and lean on the drinking and the non-drinking, the drugs and the not drugs, et cetera, et cetera. The fact they both left the company and how they dealt with it differently. I think you really would reach out to nerds <laughs> like me but i also think it's a story you could explain to someone that doesn't really understand that and if anything you're just embedding them in wwe law even more and as we said in a recent video too you don't have to pander to your audience they're smart they're, they're, they'll get it even if you're only been watching wwe for five years and you're interested in this and you understand why stone cold is such a big deal you'll go on the internet you'll watch some videos and within a few days you will have been caught up and again that's the point of videos that's the point of production that's the point of the commentators and wwe has proved they're very good at that so do i think we're getting cm punk versus Steve Austin at WrestleMania 40, I'm going to say yes. Because if I've learned anything from this life, you have to manifest these things into existence. Here we go. Now, of course, please do like the video, share the video, and subscribe to the bell, ding, ding. So you know our videos going live. I appreciate it, notification crew. There will be a video on the screen, one of my CM Punk videos from early in the week. Please do click one of them to keep your YouTube adventure going. If you are into fitness stuff, it is grillmind.com forward slash Simon. You can Simon get 10% off. I use these, best pre-workout in the game. And like I say, you get money off any of your purchases on there. Patreon.com forward slash Simon316 to support me that way. Simon316 on all social media. Kind of awful. I have 316, <laughs> given what I've been talking about today. I didn't know where my life was going. Going. Simon J. Miller on TikTok. Simon Miller on Cameo if you want some kind of shout out. Got my Samson Athletic tee on. You can go to Samson Athletics right now and get some of my exclusive tees. I'm there too. All the links are down there. Same with pro wrestling tees for my wrestling t shirts. But otherwise, make sure you get involved in those comments. Make sure you do some fantasy booking. That's half the fun. I'll see you soon.